The second crew of Skylab astronauts is scheduled to be sent into space from Cape Kennedy tomorrow for a 59-day stay in their orbiting laboratory. If they accomplish the mission, their stay will be the longest period man has been up in space. And NBC News will cover the launch beginning at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.45 a.m. and Central Time, and 6.15 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. Jim Hartz has the report. Heavy rain showers drenched the Kennedy Space Center late this afternoon, but clear weather is forecast for the launch of the second manned Skylab mission at 7.11 tomorrow morning, Eastern Daylight Time. The three-man crew, Alan Bean, Owen Garriott, and Jack Lausner, spent the day lounging on a nearby beach. Skylab program officials say they are eager and willing for the start of their 59-day trip in a space station 270 miles above the Earth. They will be in space more than twice as long as the first Skylab crew, but medical experts see no danger to the men. Going into orbit with the three astronauts will be a number of mice, spiders, and fish which will be exposed to weightlessness to see how they behave. The countdown has been going on without a serious hitch, and scientists are hoping to get back another wealth of information about man's reaction to long-term space flight. Jim Hart, NBC News, Cape Kennedy. We're all very anxious and very pleased to be back at the Cape, and we're anxious to start off on this trip for which we've all been working, at least the three of us, for something like... Oh, two or three years as a team and five or six years total, and uh, we're really anxious to get started with it, and we hope to be seeing you folks in, when we're back here on the ground in a little over two months. Skylab 3 and the three astronauts in good shape are psyched up over the longest manned space flight ever attempted, but it's pretty hard to find anyone else really excited about the mission. The three crew members face a 59-day mission, orbiting the world more than 900 times. Navy Captain Alan Bean, who explored the moon on Apollo 12, commands the flight. Dr. Owen Garriott, a physicist, is the scientist on board. And Jack Lausma, a Marine major, is the third man and, like Garriott, a rookie. Once they reach the space station and dock, they'll tackle 62 separate experiments aimed at utilizing space to help the Earth. But the medical knowledge on how well men can take a two-month-long space flight is the single biggest objective. There are fewer doubts this time, but there are still doubts. They plan to double their exercise time to an hour a day to fight off the effects of weightlessness. Carrying hundreds of pounds of new items, from extra underwear and seasoning to spice up their food, to film and experiments, it's the heaviest Apollo spacecraft ever launched. The missions get longer, tougher, and more dangerous, yet are somehow accepted as being commonplace by the people. And NASA has yet to prove the ultimate value of space to mankind, which is the real goal of Skylab. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News, reporting at Cape Kennedy. On July 28, 1973, Alan Bean, who was the fourth man on the moon, Jack Lusma, and Owen Garrett launched for Skylab and a vehicle was inserted into a 231 by 154 kilometer orbit. Rendezvous maneuvers were performed during the first five orbits as planned. Station keeping with Skylab began approximately eight hours after liftoff, and docking performed 30 minutes later. Shortly after docking and entering Skylab, all three crew members experienced motion sickness, delaying the activation of the station's onboard equipment. A more serious concern was raised on mission day five, an apparent failure of two of the four thruster quadrants in the command service module reaction control system was detected, and not only could an actual failure like this create an early end to the mission, but it could conceivably render the command service module incapable of supporting a safe return of the astronauts to Earth. Hey, uh, Al, this is Chris Kraft. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, as far as the uh, RCS system is concerned, we 
uh, really can't determine at this particular moment whether we have a generic problem or whether we have some two unique problems with these uh, quads. Now, just to be prudent, however, we have started the uh, preparation of the vehicle at the cave on a, on a uh, accelerated basis so that we would have a rescue vehicle uh, available to us should that become necessary. Okay, now, I guess in, in concluding, I'd like to say that further that we're proceeding here with uh, as if we're going to have a nominal mission. And if you feel like you need any further discussion on this thing, you free, feel free to call us in any way that you want to. John, uh, you just said the right words. We've been uh, hoping you'd say that all day, ever since we found out that uh, that was a true uh, problem that we had with our quads this morning. And we, uh, we agree 100% with what you just announced. Okay, so be it. Launch crews at the Kennedy Space Center were placed on a 24-hour per day, 7-day per week work schedule to prepare for the Skylab 4 Saturn 1B launch vehicle for flight in case an early launch was needed for a rescue operation. A decision was made to continue the mission, and although Skylab 4 launch vehicle had been rushed to flight readiness, the command service module performed flawlessly during the eventual re-entry operations. But before then, on August 6, 1973, astronauts Garrett and Lusma performed a spacewalk which lasted 6 hours and 31 minutes. During this spacewalk, the astronauts were able to extend an external twin pull thermal shield to replace the parasol thermal shield installed by the Skylab 2 group. They also retrieved and replaced film from solar telescopes housed outside the station. A second spacewalk by astronauts Garrett and Lusima was conducted on August 24, 1973. This one lasted 4 hours and 31 minutes, and during the spacewalk the astronauts received and replaced film from solar telescopes housed outside the station and installed a cable for a new rate gyro package. They also performed some maintenance activities. The third and final spacewalk of the mission was conducted on September 22, 1973. This one was conducted by Bean and Garrett, and lasted 2 hours and 41 minutes. During the spacewalk, the astronauts retrieved and replaced film from solar telescopes housed outside the station and performed maintenance activities and other external experiment packages. Scientific experiments, including the observation of unanticipated dynamic solar activity, continued for much of their 59-day mission. The crew participated in classroom-oriented educational demonstrations regarding weightlessness. The crew also tested the Astronaut Maneuvering Unit, or AMU, which was initially carried into space aboard Gemini 9, but could not be tested because of problems with the old Gemini spacesuit. The AMU experiments assisted engineers in designing the Manned Maneuvering Unit, which was first flown aboard the shuttle on STS-41B in February of 1984. The crew undocked from Skylab on September 25, 1973, and landed in the Pacific Ocean later that day. Skylab 3 crew set a new manned spaceflight endurance record of 58 days, 15 hours, 39 minutes, and 42 seconds docked at the station. The mission completed 858 Earth orbits and 1,081 hours of solar and Earth experiments. Their in-flight health fared markedly better than the Skylab 2 crew, with the exception of an amount of bone calcium loss. Still, they had made a significant demonstration of long-term spaceflight and the long-term viability of the Skylab station was successfully achieved. I didn't know we had so many friends. I'm glad to see you all here today.